Hi everyone! Thanks for tuning in for another Oakville Gallery's Home Studio Friday. Today we're going to be making our own abstract drawings inspired by artist Sonia Delani. Sonia Delani's beautiful, very colorful paintings are some of my favorites and I thought they'd be great inspiration for today's art activity. We'll be using some circles as our main design feature and just using either pencil crayons, crayons or markers, whatever you have on hand to fill in with color. Let's get started. So I've pulled out all of the materials that we're going to be using today to make our Delaunay circles. Um, we have our paper, we have our ruler, have a pencil, um, I have a black marker. I've also got my eraser just in case, but I don't think this really, really needs it. And then I have my assortment of pencil crayons. If you want to use crayons, markers, anything you have on hand, just to give it that color, you can use whatever materials that you have. So I've already made one and I just wanted to show you a reference for what your artwork could look like. Um, this can be found in our step-by-step -step PDF that we'll have on our website for you to download if you wanted to move a little bit slower and just use those as your steps that you're going to follow when you're creating your artwork. But I've got everything pulled out here. I'm just going to put it off to the side and I'm going to start with our main design feature which starts with us making circles. So we're going to use our pencil quite a bit just to get the foundation of our design down on our paper. I have a couple of things that I pulled out like just a mug. I have the top of a container that I keep my dog treats in for my pet. And then I just have like another cup here. I'm going to use just these household items to just use as a stencil for our circles that we'll have on our page but you can freehand whatever you're drawing. It doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, I think that's what makes it a little bit special that not everything looks so perfect and, and exactly like what you could maybe print on the computer or anything like that. I think it makes it perfectly unique in your artwork. Also, we're gonna be putting circles within our circles that's called concentric circles. Um, so that's also gonna be done in freehand because I don't have enough of those circles um, available to me with my household items. So I'm just going to use these just for reference to help myself with actually planning whatever design I want. So we want a lot of circles. We want to fill the page. We do want to keep some background space, but if you're really wanting a bunch of circles on here and you don't even want a background, that's totally up to you. It could look really cool. It'll be super colorful and you can do absolutely whatever you want. So I'm going to just start using my container lid here is my starting point. I maybe want to put one big circle over here. I think that would be nice. And this is something that you can do as you go. If you don't like something, just erase it. It's the beauty of using pencil. You can always get rid of things that you maybe don't want in there anymore. Um, okay, let's see. Next up, I'm just going to use my mug because I want something that's maybe just a different size. I'm going to just try and space this out a little bit. And it, if you'll see here, I've left a bit of the circle going off the page. I don't want everything to look like it's just perfectly within my paper. If you want that, it's totally good. I just feel like sometimes I want to switch up the circles and not have them all so perfect. Okay, so I've done another circle this size. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll do another one and again, I'll keep it off the page. Just make it a little bit different. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm gonna use something a little bit smaller. I've got this other cup here. So maybe I wanna do something where it's overlapped. How would I do it over here? And you can overlap your circles. I think it makes it look pretty cool actually. Now I've got my cup that has two sizes. So I've got bigger up here at the top of the cup, a little bit smaller, so it's perfect. I can use the two different sizes just using one cup. And again, you can freehand your circles here. Perfect. All right, so I've got, I've got quite a few circles, but maybe I wanna add just a couple more. Maybe I'll add another one on this side, fill it up a little bit. Perfect. 
perfect. Maybe I'll do something just up here in the corner. Again, running off the page, quite like that. And then I, I really like overlapping these circles because you'll see the cool effect that it ends up giving you after when all is filled out with color, we put our extra lines in there, it's perfect. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is you can use the eraser, you don't have to, but just for myself to keep track of what my circles are going to look like, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna erase some of the overlapping lines. I'm going to choose which circle I want to be at the front with full color and which one I want to be at the back overlapped. So I'm gonna choose this little circle to be sort of at the front with full color and not have anything covering. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna get rid of the line that I drew from the big circle. So now you can see what I mean about this one's perfectly up front, no obstructions, no lines going through. It's overlapping the bigger one here. So where else do I have my overlapping circles? Perfect. Okay, maybe I want, in this one, I'll have the bigger circle be at the front and overlap into the smaller. And then maybe this one, I'll do the smaller overlapping. Just to even it out a little bit. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, so our next step, and this is where the freehand comes in. I'm not really going to use my cups anymore to stencil anything. I'm just going to go in free-handed. Now, we want to put concentric circles inside of all these circles. What that means is you're just going to put circles within circles, within circles, within circles, all varying and getting smaller in size. It kind of gives you an effect like a target. So I'm going to go in and just create, and again, doesn't need to be perfect. That's the beauty of individual art. It's completely unique to you. So I've made a smaller circle inside of this circle here. Maybe I wanna add another one, give it more of that target effect. So now I've drawn two circles within the one circle, which means there are three circle shapes. Perfect. Some of them you can leave blank, some of them you can add even more layers and circles within your template you've already drawn. And I think I'm gonna do that with this one here. So I'm gonna put multiple circles, more than two, I think. I'm gonna try and put quite a few. Again, I'm just going to take my time, try and make my circle as nice as I can, but really just not worry about it being perfect. Because once you add that color, it's going to look awesome anyway. All right, I've done one. Let's do another one. Okay. A little tip that I want to share while I'm drawing these circles is to maybe not press as hard as you can. You want to go lightly and softly. Because then it's easier to erase, or if you don't even have an eraser on hand, you can color over it. It won't show up through your pencil crayon or your crayons or your markers, whatever you have, it won't show up as much. If you're having a super dark line that you've pressed really, really hard with, it probably will show up through the color that you add afterward. All right, I'm gonna do another one. So here we go, I've drawn three circles inside of this one. Perfect, I think this is looking really good so far. I'm liking it. How to handle something that you've had running off the page is you're just going to imagine that your circle has continued. I'm just gonna use my imagination and pretend that I have my circle continue onto my countertop here. And I'm just going to try and just do a little bit of that circle. So I've imagined that it's gone all the way around like that. Perfect. I think I just want to do the one for that. I'll just have two colors on there. I think it will look really good. I think I'm going to leave this one, just one circle 
really nice, easy. And then I'm gonna go in with this one, and maybe I'll just do one circle inside, just kind of like that one. This one has a lot, this one has two, maybe let's just do one in here. And I have to stress there is no wrong way to do this. You can do as many circles as you want, Perfect. Okay, so that's one in there. Now let's do this one here. So again, I'm going to imagine the circle is full. And just try. My very best. To keep that illusion. Okay, let's add two. Okay, so it doesn't quite finish. Perfect. Okay, next up, I want to do this one here. Let's maybe do two. In this corner. I can't wait to get some color on here. It always looks really, really nice when you add that color. So far, I think this is looking pretty good. Now, my last circle that I want to fill in. Because I have so many circles up here, maybe to even it out, let's just do Don't want to do too many, make it too busy down in this corner. Okay, again, I'm imagining the circle continuing. Through that one, it's looking okay. Let's maybe just do one more. And they don't have to be the same exact width between your circles. You can make them closer or wider apart. It's totally up to you. Okay, there we go. We've got our circles on our paper with our pencil. So that's our very first sort of start to how we're going to create the composition of our abstract artwork. The next thing we're going to need is our ruler. So the ruler basically allows us to sort of break up the circles that we have created. So I'm going to maybe just play around with this and map it out first in my mind. So maybe I want to break up this circle. Maybe it will, this is really good because it will running the ruler this way will break up two circles at once. When we break up our circles, it's basically just creating a line for ourselves to show where the color will change. So if I, for instance, do this, and something we really wanna make sure that we do is it needs to run through the middle of your circles. Otherwise, it's gonna get way too tricky when you're coloring your circles in the end. It will get a little bit confusing. So I've made sure it's running through the middle of this circle and the middle of this circle. It's okay if it's not perfect, just get it as close to the middle as you possibly can. And I'm going to run it through my background as well. The background is what is sort of blank behind my circles. And I'm gonna do exactly that. So when I've broken this up, it's now telling me that this half will be one color there's a line running through it, so then I'm gonna to wanna to change the color on the other side. Wherever you see a line, whether it is a straight line or a circular, circular line that you've created, it's when you're changing your color. So I can also go in and maybe I want, instead of just two colors over here, maybe I wanna break it up into four. So I'm gonna try and run it through the middle of this circle. 
And you know what? I don't feel like putting it through my background this time. I'm just gonna keep it within that circle. I just want this one to be separated into four pieces, kind of like four pieces of pie. So now I see I'm gonna have one color here, one color here, one color here, one color here, another color here, another color here, another one here, and another one here, and so on. So I keep breaking this up. My next one I think I might wanna do is maybe I want to, because I've run this way already, maybe I wanna run it this way. So I'm gonna try and go through the middle of this circle, just like that. And I wanna pull this one through my background as well. But if I go through this circle and it's not centered, it's gonna make it really tricky for me to color. So I'm just gonna stop it right there. I'm gonna stop my line right there. And I think that's good enough. And then I think I want to run one line just through this circle, because again, my line doesn't match the middle of these other circles next door. So I'm just gonna do it in that one circle. So now the circle that was going to be just one color is now going to be colored in two different colors. Perfect. I have everything mapped out for my composition with my circles. It's looking really good. I'm very happy with this. I think I'm done with my pencil for now. I think we've mapped it out enough and now it's time to start using our markers. If you don't have a black marker, that's really okay. You can use a black pencil crayon. You can use a black crayon, anything you want. If you don't even have black, Maybe just choose something that's dark, something that's darker than the other colors you'll be using when you're coloring in. We really want the outline of the circles to show up. It helps give it that really nice effect. Um, it also helps you see what you're coloring as you go as well. It makes it a little bit easier for you. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna outline. All the lines you have drawn need to be outlined. This is a part that you need to be very patient with yourself. It doesn't need to be perfect. Remember that. In fact, when it's not perfect, it looks even more interesting. to do is our ruler, put that down, match as best as we can where we put our pencil line before through the middle of our circles. I'm just going to do a nice line all the way down. This is a time where if you're feeling when you're done outlining everything in your black marker and you're saying, you know what? I want to add another circle or I, I want to add another line somewhere. You can absolutely do so. There is no time limit or amount of circles you need to do or the step-by-step -step doesn't need to be followed exactly. There's always room for changes with whatever inspires you. So I'm really liking this design we've created. I'm really excited to get our color on here. I think I'm done with my markers. I think I'm happy with what I have. So I'm just gonna put my marker aside. Now this is a time where, okay, so we are ready to color. I really love rainbow colors. Um, if you watched our um, painting workshop last week, then you'll know that I really always like adding tons and tons of color. So. I say let's do that again today. You can really go with whatever color themes you want or combinations. They can be all cool colors. They can be just pink and purple, green and red throughout the entire thing. It can totally, totally be whatever you want it to be. I've sort of pulled out my favorite colors that I think I want to use. I did 
pull out black because I thought, you know, I wonder what it would look like if I do some of the circles in black. Maybe give it a little bit of that contrast. Contrast is when something looks incredibly different from the other color. So if I have this light green and then I come in, bam, with this dark black pencil crayon, I think it will look really cool next to each other. So I've got my pencil crayons ready here. And I think I'm gonna start with, let's start with green, okay? So I'm gonna go in with some green and I feel like doing this one. It's a nice vibrant green. Try and stay in the lines as best as we can. Now, when you're coloring, you can press as hard as you want, you can press as lightly as you want. This is where you can really just let your imagination run wild. If you wanted to try some shading where you sort of go darker on one part and then move into pushing a little bit lighter, that's totally up to you as well. You can do whatever you want. So I've done some green here, which means I think for this circle, we're done with the green because I don't want to keep putting green next to green. It doesn't really give that contrast that we talked about. So I've done green over here. Now let's maybe put some green in this one. Now I like working color by color, but you can really work whichever way you want. For instance, so color by color is I'm doing all of my green circles at one time. Okay? But if you want to work circle by circle rather than color by color, I could have, when I started with my green here, I could have then chosen my next color in that circle and then my third color in that circle and then my fourth and then moved on to the next. But I think I'm going to work color by color this time around. So I have green here, I have green here. Let's go in and let's put some green over here. And if you notice, I'm trying to switch up the layers of the circles that I put this green color in. So I put it in the middle, I put it in the second ring on this one, and I'm putting it on the outer ring of this one. I'm trying to just switch it up, make it a little bit more interesting. If you want to match all of your circles and put green in the middle, green in the middle, green in the middle, green in the middle, that's totally up to you. I think that would also look very cool. coloring our circles and it looks incredible. I'm so pleased with this. I'm very, very happy with what we've created. And now I've realized I haven't used yellow, but I still have my background. You can leave it white if you want, or you can add color in. Again, I love color so much that I definitely am going to add it in. And I'm going to use a color that we haven't used throughout our circles. Otherwise, I don't think my circles will pop enough and I haven't used that yellow. So, I'm just gonna go in, color my background. Now with this, it doesn't have to just be one solid color. You can add designs, shapes, squiggly lines. You can do checkerboards all around. It's totally up to you if you wanna make it a little bit more interesting with the pattern or design behind. I think I'm just gonna go with this color. I think it looks really beautiful. A nice contrast. 
with my circles. Fantastic. So I've got yellow here. Now I did have my lines running through my background and you know what? I think I'm going to actually follow that. So I think I'm going to do a different color in here and then I'll separate the yellow again on this side. Following those lines, telling me when to change my colors. Just as we did in our circles, I'm following that same rule with my background. Gone in with a yellow background here. I want mine to just sort of look just like it has a touch of color. So I'm not worrying too much about filling in every little gap. Almost done. Squeeze through here. Get to the edge. Fantastic. And then next, I want to fill in that last bit of my background. And you know what? I don't have any blue. Just a little touch here. So maybe that's the time I can use that turquoise that didn't work out for me before. And I absolutely love how it contrasts with the yellow. Almost there, and voila. We have our own beautiful abstract Sonia Delaunay inspired drawing. I think it turned out brilliantly. So I hope you guys enjoyed doing that just as much as I did and can say that you found a new favorite artist in Sonia Delaunay today. Thank you so much for tuning in and doing art with me. And I would love, love, love to see what you've created today during this workshop. If you just tag your photos at hashtag OG Home Studio, we would love to share with the rest of our community and brighten everybody's day with your beautiful, colorful masterpieces. We'll be back again next Friday with another home studio. And again, all of these step-by-steps can actually be found archived on our website for further use. We'll see you guys again next Friday, and I can't wait. Bye, everyone.